Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined by Diane Caldwell on the back of being called up for the World Cup squad, Ireland's, uh, Ireland's women, first ever World Cup. So what does it mean to you to be selected for the squad? Can, you know, you've been around and seen such an evolution yeah. over time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've seen a great evolution and it's something that we've always strove for and worked really hard to achieve. So to be finally going on the plane and to represent this fine country um, in a World Cup is just something that you dream of as a kid and it's just something really uh, surreal to finally have achieved. And talk to me, like I suppose, what, what, what are your earliest World Cup memories? Like um, with, with Ireland and stuff like that, 2002, would you remember before then even? Yeah, yeah, I was born in 88, so I remember vaguely um, I think in watching the, the World Cup in the US, um, just kind of really vague snapshots of that imagery watching the TV with my family. And then obviously the, yeah, Japan and Saipan, um, I really remember I was much older then, um, but I had like a little uh, watch party out in my conservatory for every game and had flags up. And yeah, it was, it was really, a, really a momentous occasion for Ireland to be in that World Cup. And what were like what one moment I was at Robbie Keane against Germany, Ray right out and against Italy. Do you have any standout moment kind of went, I wish that was me one day? Well, I mean, I just loved football from a really young age. So I mean I was obviously a massive Ireland supporter, a massive Man United supporter, and it was just a dream of mine to to finally achieve that as well and to get to that stage. And um obviously it seemed really far away then, but that's your aim and that's your goal as a little kid and um, yeah, watching your, your heroes, Roy Keane was a big hero of mine and wanted to just to aspire to achieve what they achieved. Yeah, because along your journey, you've probably, achieved, you've probably ticked off nearly every box. This is probably the last one, I don't know, maybe the European Championships, but definitely a World Cup. Yeah. You played for Manchester United as yeah, well, so yeah. you've ticked off a lot of boxes. And how nice will this be to add to that? Yeah, you know, last year was a phenomenal year for me personally, you know. I ticked off both of those, you know, career goals for myself to, to play for Man United and to get to a major term with Ireland. So it was a really, a really lucky year for myself and very blessed and grateful. And yeah, and now it's just getting there and enjoying it and, and trying to give it the best that we can and, and try to uh, cause some upsets and uh, obviously make the country very proud of us. Yeah, you spoke about upsets. Obviously, uh, I saw you at the Scotland game, the scenes after that, you know, there was a lot of ex-players that were involved that kind of you would have played on the way up and they yeah. were there on the night to support you guys. Uh, you like uh, Emma Byrne, yeah. Livia O'Toole and stuff like that. So to see kind of you coming along and now you got obviously get the chance to, to play in this World Cup must be brilliant. Yeah. And, and you think of the run in the qualifying um, campaign as well and how nice that was and there was upsets along the way for us which which we won't complain about yeah yeah you know it was so great seeing them over there in in scotland that night because they've played their part an integral part um you know i really looked up to olivia till when i played underneath her she was such a leader a fantastic footballer and i was only 17 when i got into the team with with the likes of emma byrne and olivia till and kira grant Claire Scanlon so they were just really big role models for the, the likes of myself and other girls who had played alongside them and for them to still be a part of it and come to all of our games like Olivia O'Toole was at the Sky event last night and she said she's been to every game in Tallis since she retired so it just goes to show like how they still feel a part of it and they should um, because they've played an integral part and it's just great to see their support and you know Olivia will be coming out to Australia as well so, you know, they deserve to also um, share in the moment because they've contributed so much to it. Yeah, and they're obviously great ambassadors then to come over and, and support you. Just talk to me, I suppose, about the, the mood in the camp. I know there's been kind of tears, um, positive tears and, and sad tears as yeah. well. Um, but what's the general mood like? Everyone seems quite relaxed and, and just excited now. And obviously there's a, a game against France coming up. And um, is that hard to prepare for that in, in case something actually happens against France where someone might get injured? Is that hard to prepare um, as well? Yeah, look, I just don't think you can't really think about injuries. You know, you just have to um, just focus on training hard and training well every day and whatever happens, happens. Um, but touch wood, obviously, no one will get injured from, from this point on. And in terms of the mood, you know, the mood's been really good. Uh, it always is with the Irish team. Um, obviously, Tuesday was a bit of a tough day because you have teammates and, and good friends that have gotten bad news. So it was a day of a bit of a mixed emotions. But yesterday, I think it was a nice way to celebrate making the squad and having achieved that. 
um, with the Sky event in the evening and going to the Mansion House. So right now it's just, you know, the squad's been named and we've just got to take that step forward now and be fully focused on the next game, which is obviously France, like you said, and prepare really well for, for that. Yeah, I think, I think that's a special thing about Irish teams is there always just seems to be a very unique bond and, you know... Yeah. You can see, I know social media doesn't always tell the full story, but you can always see when the girls are put up. So they always used to be a good camaraderie around the group and a good togetherness around the group as well. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that's really attributed to our success because we are together on the pitch. We've got a really strong togetherness and unity and everyone fights for each other. And, you know, obviously then when you go through the hard times and, and the good times together, it just makes that bond stronger. And we definitely have that in abundance in this team. And I think, did I see recently that you got married yourself? Yeah, I did, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so this is the perfect honeymoon, I suppose, if yeah. things go well. Well, you'd ask Mona that, but yeah, no, it's it's been a summer of a lifetime for me, obviously getting married in Greece um, on June 10th and then coming into camp straight after. So it's been, yes, definitely a, a summer that I probably won't be able to, to top after this. Yeah, well, hopefully it all goes well. We, we do well in the group and kick on from there. I just want to say a huge thanks for your time and, Best of luck in Australia. I'll see you over there. And yeah, keep up the good work. Cheers. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.